black holes destroy information and that's a big problem. I'm talking about the black hole information paradox. It may not be very clear what that means. So what information are we talking about? What do black holes have to do with it and what is the role of Hawking radiation? And how scientists are trying to solve that paradox? My name is Andre and this is Cosmos Elementary. So, what's the paradox? It appears when we apply both general relativity and quantum mechanics. In short, according to modern understanding of physics, information in the system can neither be created nor destroyed. But when, let's say, some matter falls into a black hole, and then due to Hawking radiation, a black hole evaporates. It seems that the information gets destroyed, which violates information conservation principle, and that's the paradox. Haven't really gotten much clearer. What does it mean? Information can't be destroyed. Okay, let's begin with the information itself. What information are we talking about? In general sense, it sounds kind of weird. Let's take digital information. When we delete a file and even empty the recycle bin, the file is still physically there and we can't recover it. To completely erase it, we need to rewrite the physical location of the file with new data. So we can delete information and after all we can destroy the disk itself. It's still not clear what's so special about black holes. We can throw a drive or a book at the sun and they will be destroyed. We will not be able to retrieve information from them. Or will we? The thing is, this is not the information we're talking about. Not words on pages. We mean physical information. Sean Carroll in his book The Big Picture in this context gives the following definition. The complete specification of the state of the system. Everything you could possibly know about it. In the classical sense it would mean all possible properties, speeds, locations, etc. for every single particle in an isolated system. In the case of quantum mechanics we use a wave function. As I've already said, this kind of information can be neither created nor destroyed, but it still may be hard to comprehend compared to other conservation laws like conservation of energy. In an isolated system with a certain amount of energy, it cannot appear or disappear. It just transforms from one form to another while the system evolves. But the total amount always stays the same. We've got some physical quantity and it is conserved. The fact that it is also conserved means that having all of the information about the system there is and knowing laws of physics, we can calculate what will happen to it in the future as well as what happened in the past. If I know the positions and velocities of these balls and and other elements of the system, I can predict where they will be the next second and the second after that and so on. And I can run it backwards. A better example is the volume of gas in an isolated system, where we would know everything there is to know about every particle. Again, that's all in terms of classical physics. If we had all of the information about the system, we could tell how it would evolve and would know its past. Several different states cannot evolve into one state, because this way we won't be able to tell what were the initial states, and the information is lost. This way it's not lost, and this way it is. Leonard Tuskin tells in his lecture that all motion laws have to be time reversible both in terms of classical physics and quantum mechanics. In the second case, there is also a moment of measurement, but that's a story for another time. Basically, if we had all of the information, let's say about this ash and everything that used to be a part of it, we would be able to place every single particle back and tell what it had been before. Well, we can do this in practice, but in theory… With all that, we can come to a bit frightening conclusion. There is a thought experiment called Laplace's Demon. The idea is that if there existed some mind that had the knowledge about every particle in the universe, knew all laws of physics and had enough processing power, it would be able to see the future and the past as well as the present. Kinda like Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen. In theory, we could predict the state of the universe in the future and know its past, even though it's practically impossible. But modern physics tells us that the information has to be conserved, otherwise fundamental laws of physics break. And now, black holes. 
So physical information of this apple has to be conserved. So what's so different about throwing it into the black hole rather than just eating it? At the first glance, it's not that different. And yes, in the case of black holes, there's also time dilation. Okay, the apple is approaching the event horizon of a black hole, which is not some physical surface, but just a spherical region in space around the singularity. Before crossing the event horizon, you can escape, after nothing, even light can. What will happen to the apple next depends on the mass of a black hole. If it is a stellar mass black hole, the apple can be ripped apart before crossing the event horizon by the immense tidal forces. But if it's a supermassive one, the apple could cross the event horizon intact. But let's ignore spaghettification and all that for now. What's important for us now is that in some form matter crosses the event horizon. So far I've been describing everything from the apple's point of view. We, observing it from the distance, will actually never see it cross the event horizon because of time dilation. For us, the apple will be slowing down and then the apple will freeze at the event horizon, it will get darker and redder due to redshift, and finally the image of the apple will completely fade away. And yet, no matter how we look at it, as the information, everything is still fine. Even if we can't access the information, it is still there. If black holes were eternal, there would be no problem. And that's where Hawking radiation comes in. Apparently, black holes are not eternal. They radiate and evaporate. The phrase radiation of black holes might sound weird for some people who know that nothing, even light, can escape a black hole. Public learned about this idea in 1974 when Stephen Hawking published his study Black Hole Explosions. But the idea that black holes could radiate had been discussed prior to that. And Hawking wrote about this in his book Brief History of Time. In short, there were discussions that when matter gets through the event horizon and becomes cut off from the rest of the universe, the entropy of the universe, which is sometimes called a measure of disorder, decreases. And that violates the second law of thermodynamics, which states that on average, the entropy always increases. Back then, Jacob Bekenstein suggested the following solution. If the size of a black hole depends on its mass, when something falls onto a black hole, its mass increases and it also grows in size. Bekenstein suggested that the area of the event horizon which grows when matter that has entropy falls in could be the measure of a black hole's entropy. And if a black hole has entropy, it has to have some non-zero temperature, thus it has to radiate. At first, Hawking didn't like the hypothesis and thought that Bekenstein misinterpreted his idea that the area of the event horizon could grow. But later on, he accepted it, made his own calculations, and became convinced that after all, black holes should radiate. How, you ask? The most popular explanation is the following. Empty space is never empty, even if there is no matter. There are quantum fields. They fluctuate and virtual particles randomly pop in and out of the existence. These particles are in particle-antiparticle pairs and normally they would annihilate. So in that popular explanation, when such particles are created at the event horizon, the ones that are farther still can annihilate. But if they are too close, one particle can turn out inside the horizon, and the other one outside. They can't annihilate, and the second particle is seen by a distant observer as a radiation that carries away energy. Energy and mass are equivalent, that means that the black hole loses mass, and can eventually disappear. Not everyone likes this explanation, and some even call it wrong. Though still even Hawking himself used it in his book. In the description I leave a couple of links to explanations not involving particle-antiparticle pairs. Hawking radiation is thermal and it depends on black hole's mass. The more massive black hole is, the colder it is. Hypothetically, it would take 10 to the 67th years for a solar mass black hole to evaporate completely, and much longer for supermassive black holes. The temperature of black holes now is very low, only a tiny bit higher than the absolute zero. That's why it has never been detected directly. And what does the information have to do with all of this? You might have heard that from the perspective of general relativity, black holes are simple objects and can be described only by three parameters – mass, angular momentum and charge. It's referred to as the no-hair theorem, but we already mentioned temperature as well. The idea is that if the information is inaccessible for an outside observer – now we are not yet talking about the destruction – it doesn't matter what a black hole was initially made of. 
two isolated black holes with the same three parameters will be indistinguishable from one another. Roughly speaking, if I had, let's say, a five solar mass black hole and I got somewhere several solar masses of apples and I somehow managed to squeeze them so hard that they would form a five solar mass black hole, we wouldn't be able to tell which is from a collapsed star and which is from collapsed apples. But that in itself is not a problem. When those two black holes would finally evaporate and only the Hawking radiation in the form of photons, neutrinos and other particles remains, we wouldn't have an excuse that the information is still there, just hidden by the event horizon. There is no event horizon. Neither in practice nor in theory we would be able to tell what those black holes had been made of. All that is left is the same Hawking radiation spectrum. And because we can't get the information about the past, information is completely destroyed. Conservation of information is violated, and that's the black hole information loss paradox. And it hasn't been solved yet. But it's not to say that nobody's trying. But sometimes you can see headlines like this one and then followed by something like this. Physical paradoxes indicate that we have either incomplete or just wrong idea of some process. The problem is that both general relativity and quantum mechanics are very successful theories. They are supported with experiments and applied in various tech. So the first thing that may come to mind is Hawking was wrong and there is no radiation of black holes. But even if we may never detect it directly, still in the last decades the theory and calculations were tested by many scientists and mostly they agree that black holes should radiate. Hawking himself used to think that information gets destroyed and we might need to rewrite quantum mechanics. Kip Thorne agreed and two of them even had a bet with John Preskill, who believed that somehow information had to leak back into the universe with Hawking radiation. Leonard Susskind, who also opposed Hawking, came up with the principle of complementarity. In short, it's all about the observer. The external observer never actually sees the information cross the event horizon, and eventually information is released back with the Hawking radiation. The falling observer also sees the information. But as long as those two can't possibly communicate, there is no paradox. This requires some serious assumptions, one of which is the holographic principle, according to which our universe could be a hologram. I might get back to that in future videos. Saskin has the whole book about all this called The Black Hole War. In 2004, Hawking accepted losing the bet. He was convinced with the principle of complementarity. While Thorne refused, at the moment nobody described a specific mechanism of how information could leave a black hole. There was also a bit radical idea of the firewall, a wall at the event horizon that would not let anything in, but it's still controversial. For instance, because it needed some rethinking of general relativity. There were some ideas that information could get back to the universe after a black hole evaporated completely. For instance, in the form of some microscopic crystal or some massive remnant. Or that information goes through the wormhole into a white hole. There are some recent studies that claim to partly have solved the paradox for at least some simple models and yet even they are debated. And in general, there isn't a single solution that would make everybody happy. The existence of such a paradox tells us that we are far from a complete understanding of how the universe works. Perhaps in the future a paradox will be solved. It may require modifying modern theories or some new physics or the true theory of everything. Links to all of the sources are down below in the description and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Bye!